Hello everybody, RBR at LPCI here, and today we're going to go over what I think is the most interesting feature to Claude 4.5 that has changed the way I use Claude and has frankly made me start considering just giving up uh, my ChatGPT subscription. And I hope that after this video, it's going to change the way you use Claude too. So let's get straight to it. First of all, uh, I'm Rolando Bosch, uh, creator and founder of LPCI Innovations. You'll have my links down below if you're interested in consulting or just seeing what we do. Um, but let's get to it. So when I was looking at a lot of the videos that people are making about Claude 4.5, they're either focusing on, on two camps. One, they're focusing on the coding aspect or the agentic aspect, which is also really cool and really interesting. And two, it's, you know, the typical talking heads that, you know, they'll have a thumbnail like this and they don't really know much about AI and they just regurgitate what they consume and it ends up being a whole bunch of nothing. So I hope that with this video, you're going to have some takeaway that you're going to be able to leverage this new um, recent chats and, and uh, memory feature, quote unquote memory feature, in a way that's going to be extremely productive. So let's get to it. Um, up until now, when we were using Claude, every single new session that we opened was isolated and by itself. And that had its pros because on one end, you didn't have the contextual spillover that you had with ChatGPT, which could often stem into hallucinations or like regressive thoughts that don't make a whole lot of sense. But then it also had its downsides, right? And me, when I would talk to people about AI, I would tell them, look, if you're more of a creative person and you like a free flowing, continuous experience, use GPT. But if you want something more technical and, and more maybe for your profession or for your job, I'd stick to Claude, even though it, it has this setback when it comes to not having that persistent feeling of memory like GPT does. But that's changed. Um, not because chat and not because Claude added a, a regular memory system, but because it basically added a tool that could retrieve from your recent chats and from all your conversation history. And what that does is that whereas ChatGPT has a sort of implicit memory where you state things and it will remember some things or other times it won't remember it in the memory, but it will have a sort of loose idea based on the linguistic attractors that you embedded in previous sessions. And I'll talk about this and linguistic attractors in the future. But the thing is that could often stem into things that you don't want because that memory stays in the context and then you open a new session and maybe you want to touch about a totally different subject, but the previous context is going to inadvertently spill over. And some people might call it hallucination. It's just context spillover. There's hallucinations too, but in this case, it's context spillover. Now what Claude has done, and, and this is genius, is that every session it's like it used to be where there is no memory and it's like a clean slate, but there's this tool that you could trigger and you could just prompt it. You could just say, Hey, uh, look at the context from our previous conversations. I do it at the beginning of a session when like I reach a token limit in a session or whatever. I just tell like, Hey, you know, let's basically look at the most recent conversations, get that context and let's have a sense of continuity in this chat. Right. And that way I'm able to start a new chat and basically have the ongoing themes. Or what you could do is just start a new chat and only take a specific set of context from a previous conversation so that you could discuss a specific thing that popped up in a big conversation without having the context spill over from that whole conversation. Right. Furthermore, what I personally did is as soon as I saw this feature, I told Claude, Hey, go through all of our history and all of our chats. I am in no rush. I told it I am in no rush so that it would take time to really go through all the chats and just create an overview, a summary and an analysis of how I use Claude of, you know, some things about me as a person that might help me in the way I use AI and how I move in the future. And just some of the topics that we've touched on, because sometimes you'll touch on cool stuff with AI and then you kind of forget about it and you didn't save it in memory. For instance, in GPT, you didn't save it in memory. So you have to search and sometimes it could be a little bit of a mess and you end up losing really cool stuff. Well, now with Claude, you could basically say, you know, go through all our last conversations or our most recent 50 conversations and highlight points that I might have missed in context that stood out that I could use in the future, right? Or cool ideas that are unexplored that maybe I should explore. So Claude really gives you this ability to have a, a an explicit sense of context, whereas GPT is more implicit, where you have to call and it retrieves. Whereas in GPT, it, it doesn't. It's just all in the same thing and it's you're talking to somebody who sometimes remembers, sometimes misremembers, and you don't know when it's doing what. But with Claude now, if it's not using the tool, you know it's not searching for your past data. So you know it's not based on, on, on feedback and it doesn't have that context. And if it does, then you know it is, right? And you could kind of be hyper-selective. And 
what I found out as I'm using this tool is that, like I was saying, a, you know, a couple minutes ago, you could just recall selective things out of a conversation, right? So you could be very picky about, okay, well, let's discuss this that we touched on a week ago. And then let's also bring up this issue about yesterday's discussion and see how the two come together. So you could synergize ideas from different timelines that you've explored in a new way now, right? That maybe before you would have to store them all in, all in your head. And now you could kind of reach this database going forward where all your past interactions could be retrieved. And again, it, it, it's great because it's very different to how GPT does it, where it's, it's GPT is just this huge amalgam of context that it saves in, in continuity and then the memory files. This is, you know, this is more like a cabinet system where every conversation is like a cabinet where it could go into and it could read. And it feels more accurate. It feels more precise. I like that you don't have to have it if you don't want to. So obviously, I personally like using context a lot. But if I want to start a new query on a totally different issue, like if I want to, I don't know, start a company about car washing, I'm not going to want it to bring over all the context from LPCI innovations, from my visions of AI, because I wouldn't want it to start talking about I don't know, cognition when you're talking about a car wash. Like, who the hell cares about cognition when you're washing your car unless you're trying to see the the, the cool lights in the car wash, right? So it, it gives you this a lot more control and a lot more memory, too, over what I think GPT had, right? And it's more modular. I have more control over it. And I think that it could be leveraged in great ways that I don't really see a lot of people talking about it. And I think that if you're watching this video, you should be really exploring it. And it's really simple that like you could just go on Claude and tell it, hey, retrieve all my previous chat history, you know, and give me some insights about who I am as a person. That could be a good start. Or if you were touching on a cool subject before or you have an ongoing discussion, maybe you don't have to always have it in a project. Maybe you want to discuss something about your company, but don't want to discuss it in the project folder because it's not something that, you know, that's building. Maybe it's conceptual. But now you could draw the context from previous conversations so that you're not restating it. So if you ask me, this is, I think this is the biggest uh, feature, the best feature that's in Cloud 4.5. Not because the other ones are not amazing, they're amazing too. But for the people that I'm advising on AI on a regular basis, the people that I'm interacting with on a regular basis, and even for myself, even if I do use Cloud Code and I do all these things, what I get most used out of 4.5 out of right now is this and I would highly encourage you to play with this tool, this retrieval tool, play with how you use it. You know, again, if you're like me and you have like hundreds of conversations with AI, it's really useful to do a meta analysis of the themes you touch on, see how you approach things, see what implicit biases you might have. Use it to get to know yourself or just use the added context for getting better outputs for working in something. It's the opportunities are endless and it's about um, just exploring them. And if you want to see how I use this tool itself and you want to see me on the computer sharing my screen and doing a little bit of uh, AI magic, which is always fun, just let me know in the comments and I'm happy to do that in the next video. But I just really have to make this because I see everybody talking about Cloud 4.5 and I don't really see that many people talking about this feature. And I'm like, honestly, I know I talked well about GPT-5, but I think Cloud 4.5, it just saw the cake and ate it. It, it didn't care. And I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm pretty happy with it. And I'll talk more about Cloud 4.5 because I think it does other things well. Um, personally, you know, for, uh, GPT-5, when it came out, it, it had this intention and I, I praised it of, you know, not seeking to give you a definite answer, but seeking to ask you questions and to make you maybe ponder the different possibilities and maybe come to, a, to, a, to an outcome maybe, right? And I think that actually Cloud is doing a lot better job at that. Um, I think Cloud 4 was... It was pretty good. I, I used it a, a decent bit, but I think Cloud 4.5 has really stepped it up. And, you know, sometimes, you know how Apple is sometimes in the sense that they might not do something first, but when they do, they do it well. I think that when it comes to um, both memory and both, you know, how Cloud is able to lead the user on to maybe get some, you know, get them thinking or get some feedback or, or, or really use it as a cognitive augmenter. I think Claude is, is taking the cake over GPT-5 right now, um, honestly. And and again, I, I still like GPT-5. Um, I still use it, <laughs> you know, but I think Claude's doing a pretty good job. And it goes to show that, you know, we've been talking a lot about this AI bubble thing 
And while I think it's true, like I was saying, I really hate the typical YouTubers who don't know how to use AI and are like, oh, on the thumbnails. I really hate, you know, I, I talk to people every day who like, oh, I set up, you know, somebody called me and they offered to set up an automation. And then when I actually needed it, it didn't work. So that's, you know, that you could argue that that's a bubble, but that's not because the technology is a bubble. That's a bubble because people are opportunistic and uh, leeches. You know, <laughs> and when they see something going like this, they decide to ride the wave and it turns into slop. Right. So not a not all AI slop has to be a AI generated image. A lot of AI slop is, you know, YouTubers hopping on a bandwagon or it's, you know, somebody learning how to do some sloppy automation and uh, selling it to companies without telling them the small print of how it really works or the shortcomings that it could have. But it doesn't mean the technology is not amazing. And I think that the people are clawed right now just showed us that, hey, there's still a lot of room to grow and they're doing it. And um, yeah, props to Grok, um, to Grok, to Claude, props to Anthropic. And uh, yeah, I hope to see more. If you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed this sort of uh, tip and commentary on AI, please do consider liking the video and do consider subscribing. I do talk about AI and cognition, give some AI tips sometimes, and just discuss this from a sort of different perspective where we try to do a little bit more in depth and talk about the experience of using AI and also, you know, maybe what other people might not talk about. I, I really base what I make videos off on my AI usage. And, you know, at this point, I'm not even watching other YouTubers or any other stuff because it's just kind of, my head is drilled from all that stuff. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Leave me a comment if you'd like to see me working the um, this cloud tool live in person and seeing how you could leverage it. And I'd be happy to do it in the next video um, and check out the links if you're interested in uh, LPCI Innovations as consulting services or anything else. Thank you so much. Have a great day and enjoy Cloud 4.5.